music was too short. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. my brothers and sisters, may the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior, be with all of you. And with your spirit. We continue now placing ourselves in God's presence. You were sent to he heal the contrite in heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us with our Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You fill us with your spirit to draw us in love to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, so that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us, for power, whenever you will, attends you. 
and you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let us then grow, let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when full grown, is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what is lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowd, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. there's a much shorter version of this gospel that uh, Deacon Tom could have read today, but we always, not always, almost always try to um, read the longer form because the Word of God itself has life and um, meaning to us, and the part that the church says is arbitrary might be just the part that um, hits you in the heart, you know, today, this afternoon. That's one thing. Uh, another thing I wanted to say was um, you should be aware that um, I have not been sick at all over the past few weeks. Um, people, you know, send me little cards of get well. <laughs> More. I have been exposed a number of times to different people who I had who tested positive. So I've had five different tests my te- myself, and all of them, thanks be to God, have been um, negative. But each time that happens, uh, I have to go into some self-quarantining. And um, so we're back uh, <laughs> together again. Uh, so just in case word is spreading around that Father's really sick or somebody's afraid to come to church because people are sick here, that's not true. Uh, then this 
This parable is so beautiful. It, it has so much. Um, I'll narrow it down <laughs> in a moment. But mind you, Jesus starts out by saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man. Now, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed, and then an evil one came along and sowed bad seed. Now, that's the kingdom of heaven. That's in the kingdom of heaven. You know, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Well, that's a process, the kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. In the meantime, a lot of dark stuff happens uh, within the kingdom being created on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, difficult things happen. I mean, people ask, you know, why, why this, why that? Uh, you know, isn't God in control? And it seems like evil is stronger than good and darkness more than light and the enemy more than Jesus himself and blah, 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 blah. blah. This is all part of the process of the kingdom of heaven coming on earth as it is in heaven. If you believe in evolution, and some people do and some people don't. But if you believe in creation by evolution, uh, it took millions, perhaps billions of years to make what we have. If we were around for those billions of years, and maybe sometimes you feel like you have been, uh, <laughs> if we'd been around for those billions of years, we'd have seen all the chaos in the death, the destruction, the fires. <laughs> what? That's all part of the process of creation is not finished. Creation is ongoing. The kingdom of God is in process. And one day it will be perfected and all the, all the weeds will be separated from uh, the good stuff and so on. And we will simply enjoy in the kingdom. But as Jesus um, explains, well, he goes on, there are actually three parables here, and there are two little ones, you know, about the mustard seed and the one about the, the yeast and the dough. Uh, he presents this huge problem of the kingdom coming through the seed being sown among weeds or vice versa, the weeds being sown among the seed. It's the major portion of this reading. And in, in the middle of it are these two little parables that say, well, it's really rather simple to handle. <laughs> a little batch of dough, you know, a little yeast, um, uh, a little uh, mustard seed faith. It's very, very tiny. It's all going to change for the better. So don't get so hot and bothered about things not seeming to be as they should. And of course, they're not yet. They simply are not. But in the explanation of the larger parable, Jesus does something. I think Luke simply says that the, the good seed is the word of God. Matthew says the good seed is the children of the kingdom. That's the good seed. And the weeds are the children of the evil one. They like that, okay? Now, sowing the seed in the kingdom, which is a heavenly thing happening. In the meantime, there are, are diabolic people, and there are people of light, people of goodness, of, of Jesus Christ. Both are allowed to continue to live and to die and recreate and, and so on. But at the end, it's all going to be straightened out. Well, I take great courage from the first part of that explanation, that God sows good people among us. And don't you get the feeling at times, if you're news um, inundated, uh, that it's mostly bad people out there. Well, it isn't. Um, I'm hearing somebody going up and down the neighborhood if you're sitting right here. <laughs> and I'd, I'd like to get even with you, but I won't because, after all, I'm a pastor of God's people. But he's driving his motorcycle from morning to evening. I mean yesterday and today. Morning to evening. Well, I'd like to take an... 
so, you know, I'm giving into that bad seed a little bit, but I think, well, that guy must really be bad seed. Well, it, perhaps he isn't. He just loves his bike. But that doesn't mean we all have to like it. So I, we, we have to live together, get along together, grow together. Uh, and so, as I say, I like to try and concentrate on the good people if I can. Now, somebody reminded me, in fact, my own sister up in New York, she said, Jim, you once said, and it's true, that you're privileged as a priest to really be meeting good people a lot of times. I mean, that's the ordinary person with whom I work. You know, good staff, good parishioners, and of course, yeah, I mean, there are difficult people along the way, and I am difficult to others at times, but mostly it's really good, and Christians are, are, are my company, and, and I choose to have them at my table, and so on. Uh, so it's a little easier for me, maybe, to see the good people than it might be for others to see. Uh, but I just want to point out one, and I'm meeting people like this because you hear me talk about people I've buried, and those are people among us, <laughs> you know. They're great people, parishioners. I, I look out at some of you, boy, I know you, some of your stories. I, just this small group of people, whoa, could we tell stories. Well, I met a couple uh, in this past week. They're friends of uh, Chuck and Marilyn Faludo, and some of you know Chuck and Marilyn. And they've always told me about Chris and uh, Mike. Um, and they said, we'd love to have you meet them sometime. They're, you know, they come here once a year to be guests of ours. So I met them last week. Um, Mike, at one time, was a student in Marilyn's high school where she, she was the principal. And Mike played on the football team that Chuck coached. So there was a, that kind of connection. But the Saludos are the kind of people, you know, you, you can become friends with very quickly. Their faith and, and goodness and humor shines out there, and you're drawn to in Young people are drawn to them. At the time, uh, 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 Michael was on, as I say, uh, Chuck's football team, I forget what he played, anyway, uh, was the lineman, and he was captain of the team, and all, I know, all state, I think. Um, at any rate, he ended up uh, getting a scholarship to uh, Michigan Tech, a full paid scholarship for football, okay? And he had gone, he was into his second year, sophomore year of college, and out partying with a bunch of the young people, you know, as um, kids will do. And uh, he dove into the lake, and he had been here before to this place, so he knew the problems. And he, and make a long story longer, actually, not to make a long story short, he uh, broke his neck and ended up quadriplegic, uh, not just paraplegic, at 19. Um, which affected a lot of people around him because he was so popular, a six foot six, um, uh, you know, uh, a football player, and suddenly he is wheelchair bound. Now, I met him, uh, as I say, last week for, the, for him and his wife, Chris. They've been married 21 years. Um, uh, Mike, they're deep believers in the Lord. Uh, Michael has been wheelchair bound for 41 years uh, and met his wife uh, some 22 years ago and they have, or 23 years ago, she was a para pro and a teacher and uh, they fell in love. <laughs> uh, and Mike said to her before they married, do you know, Chris, do you have any idea what you're getting into by marrying me? And, uh, well, she had some idea because she was a parapro. Well, she has been a saint alongside of her a husband who also, I would say, is a, a saint. Um, and by saints, I mean people that you're slack-jawed to know. You know, you say, how do they do it? How? 
he decided to take charge of his life at 20 years old and knew that he could either, you know, end it all somehow or another or choose to make something of his life. He chose the latter. He ended up being a motivational speaker to um, a lot of young people. Uh, he was an IT, he was brilliant in uh, IT work. So uh, the Southgate school system used him frequently uh, for, their, for their repairs and installations and so on. He couldn't do anything. He could only point to something, you know, with a finger or two that he had. But he could speak and he could identify the problem and tell you how to handle it. And he was so good at it that he worked at it for years. He became, and he took relatively small payment for all of this, although it was his income, because he felt he owed the school system a great deal. And he would tell kids, I don't want you making the same mistake that I have made. You know, this crazy kind of chances we take when we're younger. He said, I blame no one. I don't ask God why me. He said, why me? Because I did it. <laughs> I did it. I mean, what, what a great attitude. You know, he steps up to the plate, even though, so to speak, he can't. Um, and he takes responsibility for his life. Well, without his wife, probably, he would not have lasted to this day. He's 60 years old now. And um, she does for him. Oh, my goodness. And it, what I'm thinking in these readings today, they're about forgiveness. They're about God's patience with us. Patience and forgiveness uh, run all through these readings, the good seed and the bad seed. And like, wait, 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 wait and see. Uh, be patient. See what happens with all of this. You may not think good is going to come out of it, but it does. It does. And here, 41 years later, the lives these people have touched. She has to turn him every two hours and through the night. Spent 23 years of her marriage, of their marriage doing this all, uh, constantly. She has to help him and how humbling this must be for Mike. Uh, how, <laughs> how patient he has to be with himself how forgiving he has to be with himself, first of all. That, you know, he feels as though he brings on this kind of difficult life to his wife. And people will look at Chris, and I told her, you know, some would call you courageous, but other would, others would say simply, as she does, it's love. <laughs> it's not courage. It's simply love. Well, that's holiness. That's holy seed planted among us. A year ago, just within the past year, um, uh, he developed sores on his back, and usually he doesn't. She's so good at this uh, turning of him, and he knows how to bend back on the chair to have push him back every 18 minutes. So he's moving a little bit. But he did develop a, um, a sore on his, on his lower back next to the tailbone. That bone ended up going inside his stomach, creating an eight inch like a spear uh, over time. And of course he couldn't feel it at the time. Uh, ended up, he had to go through serious surgery, of course, and um, had that all taken care of, and he had that done in Ann Arbor. And when they finished, they set him up with uh, a bed, but it was an improper bed. It did not work uh, for his, his condition. And in fact, made it worse so that they had to go back in again in the surgery a few months, uh, months ago, months last, last summer. And um, the hospital apologized, and they, they, it's a wound center. And they said, we'll what would you like? We'll do anything for you. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I am, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not that kind. He said, but if you would just take care of my whatever 
hospital bills result from this, that will be fine. He could have probably owned the hospital. I don't know. Um, but he said, no, we, we don't do that. And that's amazing. And the two of them, their sense of humor, how they laugh at each other and with one another. You feel privileged to be in their company. <laughs> you feel refreshed and new. <laughs> how, how can that be said of most of us? I mean, and we have every reason to be refreshing kind of people and positive people. Because we are believers in Jesus Christ, as Chris and Mike are. I, I, I left that little social get-together uh, last week. We were outside in masks and whatever. Um, or some of us had masks. Uh, but I felt as though I had been exposed to some needed therapy. <laughs> um, and don't we all need some of that kind of therapy right now? All right? So the... Yes, the weeds, the difficulties, and the difficult people grow along with the wheat. But the wheat is going to win out. And people like Chris and Mike convince me it is so. Let us stand to pray our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the world in need. That all church leaders consistently preach the good news of justice, kindness, and hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders allow the needs of their people to inform and impact the decisions they make, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer injustice and for all who need a sign of hope today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that each of us use our gifts and talents to share with others the good news of the kingdom of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, especially Jane Furlong, wife of Tom Furlong, and for three recently deceased friends of Marilyn and Chuck Savludo, Mike, Rich, and Cheryl, that they may be raised up to a new life of hope and fulfillment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased relatives and friends, especially Doris Bachman, Louis Fairbrother, Albert Miracle, Sherry Wilson, that they may be heirs of the eternal life of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask it all. Father God, Lord of the harvest, now and forever and ever.
and brothers that our sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion various offerings of the law, accept this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Yes, Father God, it is right for us and just always and everywhere to thank and praise you for you laid the foundations of the world and you have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and you set us over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over everything you've made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord with whom we join the angels now to sing your praise. Thank you. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples and saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church, your people spread throughout the world. Bring us together in love with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Pope Emeritus Benedict, Alan, our Archbishop, Arturo, our Regional, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially those we name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her holy spouse Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, including Benedict, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beg you, O Lord, from all evil in our day. Keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your people. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Yes. Thank you.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have filled with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life through Christ our Lord. Uh, just a reminder that we have uh, resumed our uh, weekday Masses on Tuesday and Thursday here in church at 12.15. I always have to leave you with one little, well, maybe two little stories. <laughs> What's a, uh, no kids. What's a cat's favorite summer treat? What? A, a cat's favorite summer treat. A mice cream cone. <laughs> Try again, one more. Uh, where do sea cows sleep at night? In barnacles. <laughs> you can thank Alexa for those. Please stand. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Go forth and proclaim the kingdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.